What's up guys? What's up? It's uh, coming up on 2am on a uh, weeknight or a workday night. So I thought it'd be the perfect time to uh, record an ASMR for you guys. So today, I wanted to talk about the animated movie Over the Hedge, um, starring Bruce Willis, Steve Carell, Gary Shandling, Nick Nolte, Wanda Sykes, William Shatner, Allison Janney, and more very stacked to stack cast in this movie. Avril Lavigne as well, in a, in a smaller role, but still a big name, and Avril Lavigne is in this movie, so the movie Over the Hedge opens with Bruce Willis' character, RJ the Raccoon, trying to get some chips from a vending machine, and he can't do it. He He's just not, he's just no good at it. And so he decides, um, against his better judgment that, because he's, you know, man's gotta eat, he's gonna go steal uh, just this, just this, just the smallest amount of food from, um, Vincent, who is a grizzly bear, who RJ has a kind of working relationship with, they have a bit of history. So he sneaks up to Vincent's cave, and he's got all the fucking shit in the world, like, so much food in this cave, you wouldn't believe it. And so, um, RJ, you know, kind of lose the run of himself, and he's like, oh, well, I was planning on, on only taking, um, only taking what I needed, but now I think I might just, uh, take, take all of it, and so he does, he takes all of it, and Vincent's asleep in the cave, and RJ's, you know, trying to be very careful not to wake Vincent up as he's robbing him blind, um, but it doesn't work out, Vincent does wake up. Because RJ tries to get one last thing, and that one last thing is what wakes Vincent up. And you know, it's kind of like a classic Greek story of uh, hubris. You know, you think of Oedipus Rex and the bride, and RJ thinks he's so good, and he's bride. Um, and that's why he got done in by, um, by that, which the moral is not about bride coming before the fall, um, we'll, we'll, we'll get it, we'll go over the moral at the end, but this sort of pride element is, is mostly just played for, for, for a goof, for a gag, um, in the opening of the movie, but Vincent wakes up and he sees RJ a, a moments away from stealing all of his food, and RJ's like, <laughs> I want this, I was, I was just, I was just fucking around, I wasn't, I wasn't gonna fucking rob you, what am I, an idiot? No, 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 no. I respect you, Vincent. I respect you. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to put it all back. No harm, no foul. And then, um, you know, that'll be that. Um, but RJ makes a very uh, small mistake. He bumps the cart because all the food was in a sort of... Uh, it, was, it was in a sort of, a sort of cart, you know, like a sort of... cart, and he kind of leans just with his back against the back of the cart, and the cart comes rolling down a hill and gets struck by a car and all the food, all, all the food, all of Vincent the Grizzly Bear's food gets destroyed, vaporized, does not exist anymore, and so Vincent's like, well, you know, RJ, I gotta kill you now, bud, you know, like, these are the rules of the world we live in. You destroy all my food, I kill you, and that's why you don't destroy all my food. And if I let you off, it's like a union thing, if I let you off, then everyone's like, oh, Vincent's gone soft, so I gotta kill you. And RJ goes, wait, wait, no. You don't have to kill me, because I'm gonna get it all back. If you kill me, you'll have to go get all that 
hey, hey, you got it, pal. I'll do it. And her just like, I'm fucked. My goose is so fucking cooked. So, meanwhile, um, Vern, who was a turtle, played by Gary Shandling, uh, is waking up the various foragers of the forest. Um, and that includes, um, Hammy, the squirrel, the, the sort of hyperactive squirrel, played by Steve Carell, Stella, the skunk, played by Wanda Sykes, Ozzy, and his daughter, who I don't remember the name of, but Ozzy, is played by William Shatner, and his daughter, I'm, I'm pretty sure that was Avril Lavigne, I remember Avril Lavigne's name was in the credits, um, and I'm pretty sure it was because she was playing William Shatner's daughter. Um, and then there was, like, this family, family of five porcupines, and mama, mama porcupine, daddy porcupine, three pretty identical kid porcupines. They're, the por honestly, the porcupines are the, the least important part of the story. They have a few things here and there, but by and large, they're just there to kind of bat the numbers out, if, if we're being honest. Um, so Vern, uh, they're all waking up from hibernating. And Vern's like, all right, guys, it's spring. It is spring, which means we have 296 more days till winter. So let's start foraging again. Hey, guys, let's start getting more fucking berries and nuts and shit. Um, and then Hammy's like, oh, yeah. What's, but what's that over there? And they all look, and it's the hedge, the the titular hedge that's what the movie's named after. I'm gonna take a quick water break. Always important to uh, stay hydrated when recording ASMR. A lot of the whispering can really, um, really, you know, take it out of you, so it's important to stay hydrated when doing these stuff. So, RJ is witnessing all the foragers waking up, and they notice the hedge, and Vern's like, what the, this used to be a fucking thousand miles of fucking forest, what the fuck is this hedge thing? I'm gonna go fucking check this shit out, guys. So Vern goes through the edge and he just gets, fuck, he, he gets his shit rocked. It's like, it's a bit like, um, when, um, Eddie Valentine, uh, goes into, uh, Toontown in the movie, uh, Who Framed Roger Rabbit. He's just like, he's getting it from all sides, you know. He goes out and then there's a barbecue and, like, knives from the barbecue almost fall on him. And then he tries to run away and then there's a dog who gets mad at him. And then he's in the street and he gets run over by a car. And then he just manages to crawl his back his way back through the hedge, and he's like bros, and he's like, "All right, guys, that's the danger zone. We're never fucking coming over there. That's that bad shit there. We do, we don't want any part of it." And then RJ comes and he goes, "Nah, you you do want a part of it. It's actually pretty sick." And Vern's like, "Who are you? And what the fuck are you talking about?" And RJ's like. Listen, these are humans, and I know something about humans. You know, you think they're dangerous, and sure, they're a little bit dangerous. I'll grant you that. But they also have the dopest food ever. Um, and you could, like, you're going to, what's been 296, is that the number you said, 296 days uh, foraging? I tell you what, I think you can get all of the food you need for the whole winter in a week. And they go, what, in a week? You're fucking high. And because the thing is, a week is how long Vincent gave RJ. Our, Vincent said, look, RJ, you got till the next full moon, which is a week, to get all my stuff back or I kill you. And so RJ's like, you know, ah, you guys, you can get it in a week. In a week, you can get all the food. And Vern's like, no, we're not doing that. It's dangerous over there. What are you talking about? How, how good could good food be, really? Like, fucking berries are, are nice, like... And then RJ pulls... 
themselves out, you know, a bag of, um, what are, you know, they don't, they don't get into specifics on the product, but, uh, it's basically Doritos, and he opens the Doritos, and there's a big nacho cheese puff, and then all the fucking animals are like, holy fuck, is that fucking nacho cheese? That shit's unreal. Fern, I got, I gotta see what this is about. I've never had shit like this. I've never had, like, this premium shit, Vern. Fuck a berry. I want a fucking Dorito. I want, like, they got other shit like Doritos. That's mad. Fuck it, let's all go check it out. Fuck it, we'll, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll be cautious. And so RJ gives him the whole fucking door, and he's like, these are humans. Humans' whole lives revolve around. They revolve around eating. They, were, they, they just eat all the time. They have so much fucking food here. They have those phones. Those, those are used to summon food. Those cars, those are used to deliver food. Everything's about food. And look at these fucking big metal pens. This is the food they don't fucking want anymore. They, they don't like this shit. So we could just fucking grab this, this shit. Out of, they call them trash cans. We could grab this shit out of the trash. And the humans fucking mind like and there's so look at all these fucking trash cans and i realized this was this was kind of an important detail but this whole community because you're like how the fuck it's like tons and tons of suburban houses how the fuck did were they surviving before rj did they not know about this it's like this is like a pop-up residency like apparently they built all of these houses um levit down style over the winter which you know, sure, sure, they, they built a hundred houses over four months, sure, with no prior ground laying, they bulldozed the forest in four months, but so these, these, they're like those tribes, they've been untouched by civilization, and then suddenly, boom, civilization, it, it stretches credulity a little bit, I won't lie, but I'm not here to, to nitpick. I'm here to explain the plot of Over the Hedge. I think it's time for another water break. High quality H2O. Now, so RJ is showing them the trash cans. They're eating out of the trash cans. And they think, you know what? I like trash. Um, and then the president of the All Owners Association, she comes out. She's like, what the fuck? She starts hitting them with a broom. And she's like, oh, fuck, fuck, run, fucking run. And then Vern's like, see, you see what I fucking mean? Danger, fucking danger. Not fucking cool, not fun. Food's not that fucking good, not fucking going back. And then all the people were, all the people were like, yeah, that was, that wasn't on RJ. He was all right, nah, that, that was pretty bad. I won't lie to you. I won't lie to you. I won't lie to you now. That was pretty bad. But, you know. Pros and the cons and the, the cons of the woman chasing with the broom. I think are somewhat outweighed by the pros of me not getting murdered by a bear. But he doesn't say that because it's a secret. It's his it's his big secret because he's he's um he's using them. You see, he is using the forest dwellers um to get the food for him for Vincent because he can't get it himself. muted the mic to, uh, to yawn there. Not because I think the movie is boring, just because sometimes a man has to yawn. So, where was I? Yes. So RJ is like, God, well, let's go back. And they're like, nah, nah, it's, it is too dangerous, RJ. And so he sleeps it off and he's like, ah, I'm going to get murdered by a bear of shit. And then he wakes up and he looks down at all the foragers and they're like, dreaming of the fucking glimpse of the human life. He just showed them over an hour, like, they're pretending to make, like, they're making dur Doritos out of, like, tree bark, and they're like, oh, fuck, I wish it was a Dorito, goddamn. And then RJ comes back down and goes, hey, guys, I know. We all got a little crazy with the broom incident. Uh, but, Hammy, look, we're, we're gonna do a, doing a spec op. Me and you, Hammy, we're doing some black ops operations, just 
RJ and Hammy tag team. Come on. Come on, let's go. Because RJ has spotted his mark. Two Girl Scouts uh, with a bunch of cookies. And he's like, and more importantly, the shiny red cart uh, that he destroyed that Vincent had. So he's like, oh, fuck, I get that shiny red cart and some cookies. This is the perfect target. And they're two fucking little girls. This is easy. And so he goes, all right, Hammy, I'm going to make you look like a rabbit squirrel. And then you're going to run in. And then while they're like, oh, fuck, rabbit squirrel, I'm going to go steal the cart. And then we both run back. And Hammy's like, okay, great. Um, and then they just start beating the shit out of Hammy. And they're like, rabbit squirrel, kill it. And they're pepper spraying it and smacking it. And then Vern comes out. He goes, what the fuck? What the fuck are you? Hammy's going to die. And RJ's like, I think he's got it under control. We have a system. And then Vern runs out and he gets like hit by a street sweeper or something. It hits the girls in the face and then they kind of get like, whoa, what the fuck? And then through the Vern distraction, uh, RJ takes off with the cart and Hammy. And he's like, great work, Vern. And great work, Hammy. Hammy, you're a natural. You're a thespian, Hammy. And then Vern overhears that like the president of is actually like fucking animals with rabies. I think I'm going to call an exterminator. Uh, then we have a montage because even though this was like a little sketch of, a, of an op, um, it didn't work. And so he kind of swung everyone else around. It's like, let's just do a shit ton of ops. So big montage. They get a shit ton of food through various means. As a fun Ben Folds song plays because Ben Folds did a bunch of original songs for this film. Um, but then we come back and then Vern is, he's still not about this. He still thinks this is kind of something about this RJ guy. It, it, it makes, makes his tail shake is the um, terminology used in the film. And so everyone's out. He goes, oh, what, what are they doing now? What are they doing now? And he checks. And um, there's Ozzy. William Shatner's character, Ozzy the uh, Possum, lying dead on the side of the road in front of a car. And he goes, oh my fucking God, Ozzy is dead. Ozzy's fucking dead. Now here's the thing. Ozzy's whole character, because I'm not sure what you know about possums, but possums play dead as a survival tactic. Um, do a decided Jim Gaffigan stand-up routine. The idea is if something's about to go kill the possum, the possum's just like, oh, fuck, you can't kill me. I'm already dead. Look, I'm a dead thing. Oh. And then the thing that was going to go kill them is like, ah, oh, fuck. I was going to go fucking kill this thing, but it's already fucking dead. What's the fucking point? Ah, oh, well, I got to get fresh live meat or something. And then Jim Gaffigan, his joke about that, because um, I think they tell you to play dead around bears or something, as he goes, Yo, I don't mess with dead things. I'm a bear, not an animal. It's, it's, it's much funnier when Jim Gaffigan does it. I'm like 95% sure it's a Jim Gaffigan bit. It might be another comedian. If it is, there will be an annotation on the screen correcting myself. But like 95% sure it's Jim Gaffigan. Um, anyway, so this Ozzy is not dead. Ozzy has not been struck by a, a car and murdered. Ozzy is using his thespian's degree because he talks he, he's a thespian talking about the high art of playing dead and, and so he's really you know hamming it up he's really just like <gasps> the light <gasps> I'm going into, the, I'm going into the, the, the light I see the light death death is coming death is near William Shatner fucking lives for that shit. And he's been trying to give notes um, to his daughter on how to do that. But So while William Shatner is pretending to be dead, RJ and the rest of the gang are getting the blue cooler off the roof of the SUV. Because that's what Vincent wanted. And so... I'm sorry for tapping the mic. That wasn't part of it. That was an accident. I apologize if that ruined any sort of things for you. So Vern goes to investigate this, and then um, the president of the Homeowners Association brings out the exterminator who's about to kill Ozzy, or trap Ozzy, because he's already dead, or whatever the fuck. And, like, RJ is like, oh, fuck, we gotta go, we gotta go. And they get the cooler off, and then, like, they, they get the, back to the edge, and then they say, oh, Ozzy's like, we're clear, Ozzy, book it, book it.
look at Ozzy. So Ozzy runs back. And then Vern overhears the exterminator talk with the president of the Homeowner Association. And the exterminator is like, I'm I'm sensing a, a raccoon, a, um, a squirrel, a skunk, um, five porcupines, two possums, and a, a reptile. And it's like, oh fuck, this exterminator, he's good, like. And so then they go back and like, that was like a pretty sketch up. Like that one, that one, they really nearly got caught. They, they kind of pushed it. And Vern's like, what are we doing? Guys, that was too much shit. And they're like, nah, it's fucking good. Hey, RJ, we had a whole fucking surprise for you. Um, And so they like show him, they built him this whole fucking like couch and with a television and like a little portable gaming console. And it's like, this is your fucking little, little bunk now, RJ. So you don't have to fucking sleep in that tree all the time. And he's like, oh my God. You guys did this for me. You did this really nice thing for me. I've never had a family. And, and here are you guys doing all this stuff. And I'm going to betray you. I'm totally going to betray you. I'm going to betray you so hard. But now you've done this really nice thing for me. So I don't know what to do. Oh, fuck. Um, do I think I'm probably still going to betray you. But shit. Fuck you. Nice people. Ah, God damn it. Um. And then, because the next day is when RJ is going to steal all the food to give it to Fenson. Um, so RJ wakes up and the food is already gone. And he's like, what? And why are the, f- the fucking, my, my, the, th- the thing that's going to save my life, prevent me from being murdered by a bear. It's gone. And he, he runs out and he sees Fern dragging it across the thing. And he's like, Fern, what the fuck, what the fuck are you doing? What the fuck are you doing, Fern? And, and he's like. Look, the humans were, like, really mad that we stole all their shit. So I'm just going to go give it back. I think, like, I'm going to give it back, and then the exterminator will probably just go home. And RJ's like, no, you big dummy. You big fucking dummy. Okay, look. Maybe we're a little hot boy about this. Maybe, you know, we were a little hot. You made the streets hot made the shit hot, but, like, we done that shit now. That shit's over. It, it, we, we, it happened. We're, we're not gonna want to apologize. What the, what, the fuck are you talking, what the fuck are you talking about? We can't apologize. They don't understand us. What the fuck are you saying? And Vern's like, well, I can't think of a better idea. I can't think of a, of, a, of a better idea than giving this shit back. And RJ goes, you're fucking hot. Are you fucking, you got fucking packing peanuts in your fucking turtle brain, you fucking idiot. You fucking big dumb fucking reptile. Moron. Moron, look at I could, I could, I could shake you in here, in here two dice inside of your stupid fucking skull. Um, but this conversation gets interrupted by a rat, by a dog. A dog attacks them in the cart of all the food, and it's a big action sequence where the dog is chasing the cart, and the cart is getting pulled by the dog, and then the cart gets caught on a propane tank, and then the propane tank uh, it gets lit, and it sort of acts as like a jet propeller, and, and then they get like awnings that turn into wings, and they launch up a slide, and and then the whole cart of food is soaring. It's 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 soaring through the air. It's like soaring. Uh, it's it's like soaring through the air. And then the propane runs out. And RJ and Vern grab an umbrella, and all the food falls way below them. And Vern looks RJ in the eyes and says you're the devil and then the umbrella catches fire and then they plummet and the the cart of the food lands on the SUV of the president of the homeowners association and Jay's like um and then Vern and RJ land back a four side of the and then everyone's like, what the, what the fuck happened? And RJ's like, fucking, fucking ask, ask him. Ask, ask him what fucking happened. Someone, someone fucking thought they could return the food we 
and some subtext that was not intended by the screenwriters, but that was my interpretation of uh, what RJ was saying. And Vern was like, okay, look, I, sure, it's, I, I destroyed all the food, but... RJ. Something doesn't feel right about him. And you know what? I think you're all too stupid to fucking know it. And they're like, we're... We're too stupid. You're calling us stupid. We're your family. And Hemi, who is like, This, they 
do a whole heist, the inside heist. It's the first time they go inside a person's house. And it's like, alright, so Hammy is going to tightrope walk onto the roof, and then he's going to take the roof, go down the drain pipe, and then he's going to manually turn off the laser grid. Then, in terms of getting inside the house, um, they have a, a, they have a cat, and the cat has a, has a collar. Has a, has a collar. Vincent is pissed and 
so RJ crashed and the exterminator struck me. He goes, God, rescue command. Yeah, I'm rescuing you guys. And then Vern's like, oh, great, you're rescuing us. And then all the other animals are like, fuck you, you still betrayed us. And RJ's like, yeah, yeah, I still betrayed you, but I'm rescuing you now. And then Vincent the bear crashes into the truck as well. And he's like, fuck you, RJ, you fuck, you motherfucker, I'm going to fucking kill you. And RJ's like, yeah, yes, rescue came me. let me in the fucking car. And they're like, no, he goes, Vincent's going to fucking kill me, let me in the fucking car. And they're like, no. And then Vern's like, guys, I think we should let him in the car. He goes, Vern, you're the one whose who's gut was saying we shouldn't let him in. He goes, yeah, but my gut's now saying we should. And they're like, oh, fair enough. So they let RJ in the car. And the uh, the kid porcupines are, are driving the car because there's a little, little side joke about how they had a, uh, a, vid- a portable video game console with a razor on it. I think they said like something like this is just like vehicular homicide three, which is like a Grand Theft Auto reference. So the kids are driving, and then they crash the thing into some uh, balloons, and Vincent goes floating away, and then they just flip the fucking truck, and the exterminator wakes up. And they're like, all right, fuck, run, run, back to the edge, back to the edge. Let's get the fuck out of Dodge. So they're running into the edge, and then they get into the forest, and then Vincent floats down on balloons. And they're like, oh, fuck, okay, back to the fucking sub- suburbs. And so they go back into the suburbs, and then there's the exterminator with the fucking cattle brought And they're like, oh, fuck, okay, fuck, fuck, fuck. Let's just be in the hedge, because the hedge is a... It's not a one-dimensional space. The hedge is is this wide. And so, yeah, here is Vincent the Bear in the forest. Here is the exterminator in the suburbs with the cattle prod. And so they're in the hedge. And so Vincent will be like is swiping at them. And the exterminator is cattle prodding them. And they're ducking and dodging. And so every now and then the exterminator will cattle prod Vincent. And Vincent will like swipe and smack the exterminator in the face. And so RJ's like, all right, guys, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to turn myself in. Vincent, Vincent wants me. I'm the one he wants. I turn him in. You guys can go. And Vern's like, no, you're part of the family. And they're like, there's not enough time. And they look at Hammy, the hyperactive squirrel. And they make the decision. Because they kind they set this up. This isn't totally out of the blue. Um, you know, but intricacies like Chekhov's gun kind of fall through the wayside when you're doing these summaries. But So they set this up earlier. Um, they give a Hemi a Red Bull. And a Hemi is very hyperactive, as is. And so when they give him a Red Bull, he become basically becomes Quicksilver from the X-Men. He like is he like time stops because he's moving that fucking quick. And so RJ pops his head out of the top of the hedge. And he's like, come get me, Vincent. And Vincent jumps over the hedge. And he bites RJ. And then Hammy walks like Quicksilver over to the um the, the big fucking device the Kirk Starminer set up and he sets it to the biggest animal he's got on the thing and so then he starts walking back and we look up and we see that RJ is wearing Fern's shell so Vincent didn't bite it through him he bit into a hard shell and then Vern using a um a fishing a fishing rod that RJ's used a few times throughout the movie reels RJ with the shell back in and RJ gives him, you know, one of these, you know, one of, like a... And so Vincent crashes on to the exterminator and the president of the homeowners association and they activate the trap and they get, like, set on fire and put in a big fucking cage. And then all the foragers go back to the forest and then animal control puts Vincent in, like, a big thing. They say they're sending him up to the Rockies. Um... And they are arresting the president of the homeowners association because she bought that thing that she said she wanted that was against the Geneva Conventions. And they're arresting the exterminator because he fucking sold it to her. Um, and then, like the homeowners association is a real caring about getting arrested. Before that was like a term. Um, and then the exterminator is like, yeah, got her fucking tries to sneak away. And then the dog that chased the car earlier attacks him. And there's a lot of a lot of fun. Anyways. But anyway, we end on this moment where Vern looks at RJ and he says, RJ, if you had just told us that you needed to get this food because a bear was going to kill you, we would have just helped you.
that's what families do. And her just like, ah, you're too good to me. And then there's, a, there's a credits play, and then there's a, just a post-credit gag about them trying to get that same vending machine that RJ was fucking with at the beginning. But that's over the edge. And so the moral is about family and, and how a family looks out for each other in a, in a sort of found family. And it's, it's a pretty okay film. Yeah, it's, it's, it's all right. I mean, I, I, yeah, I rewatched it for this video and yeah, I didn't hate him. It wasn't bad. Um, but that is the end of this ASMR. So thank you guys so much for watching. I hope this did something for you. And if you watched all of this, if you watched all 40 plus minutes, 40 plus minutes of this, <laughs>